welcome to our final video on diabetes management. This video will touch on the plate method designed for diabetics and the importance of label reading. Let's jump right into the Idaho plate method. The plate method is a tool designed to assist in diabetic meal planning. Start with a nine inch dinner plate. Fill half with non-starchy vegetables such as a salad, green beans, broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, or carrots. Fill one quarter with a lean protein such as chicken, turkey, beans, tofu, or eggs. Fill a quarter with a grain or starchy food such as a potato, rice, or pasta, or skip the starch altogether and double up on non-starchy veggies. Filling half of your plate with vegetables can also lower the caloric content of your meal and may lead to weight loss. The plate method is a simple visual way to make sure you get enough non-starchy vegetables and lean protein and limit the amount of higher carb food that has the greatest potential to spike your blood sugar. We often refer to the importance of serving size and portion size, but these two aren't always the same. A portion is the amount of food you choose to eat at one time, while a serving is a specific amount of food such as one slice of bread or eight ounces of milk. Studies show that people tend to eat more when they're served more food, so getting portions under control is really important for managing weight and blood sugar. With this handy guide, you'll always have a way to estimate portion size at your fingertips. Now that we know what our healthy plate consists of, here are a few tips that will help at the grocery store. The first suggestion is to plan ahead. Create a list of foods for breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks that fit into the plate method and plan your meals for a week. Grocery shopping lists are a helpful way to reduce your chances of purchasing unhealthy foods. Next, we have don't shop hungry. If you shop hungry, you are more likely to impulse buy unhealthy items. Also avoid shopping tired or angry. Emotions always play a role into our food choices. Another suggestion is to choose real foods. Avoid foods that contain more than five ingredients, artificial ingredients, or ingredients that you cannot pronounce. That's not to say that these items don't have their place, but they should be purchased less frequently than more nutritious foods. Learning how to understand and use the nutrition facts label can help you make healthier choice, eating choices and identify nutrient dense foods for a healthy diet. It's important to look at the serving size and the number of servings per package. Choose foods that are lower in total fat, saturated fat, cholesterol, and sodium. Keep trans fat at a zero. Also take a look at the total carbohydrate line. This number tells you how many carbs are in one serving and is useful if you are carb counting. On the next slide, we'll go more in depth and show how you can determine how many starches are in a food item. Lastly, choose foods that are nutrient dense and a good source of fiber. This is a picture of the nutrition label found on almost all packaged foods sold in this country. Look at the portion of the label that tells how much total carbohydrate is in the food in order to decide how much it might raise your blood glucose. Total carbohydrate is the sum of the fiber, sugar, and starch in the food. However, only sugar and starch break down to glucose and can affect blood glucose. Be sure to look at the total carbohydrate and not just the sugars to see if a food will raise your blood sugar. Remember, it is okay to take everything one step at a time. You don't have to tackle all of this at once. Surround yourself with a team of people to help you as you pick one thing to work on for right now, like cooking more at home or reading nutrition labels and focus on th that one thing. We hope you found these tips helpful. Remember, when you eat good, you feel good when doing your best to manage diabetes. This video was provided to you by the Health and Nutrition County Agent in the newly formed Chisholm Trail District Office between the Marion and Dickinson County offices. Please feel free to contact your local county extension agent for more resources. Not sure who that is? Go to ksre.kstate.edu and search County Extension Offices to see where your local county office is located.